You want to highlight certain periods on a line chart or a column chart to put your numbers into context? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to set up these two examples and how to add buttons to your chart to let the user choose which custom periods actually should show. Now, let's get started. The first example that we are going to build is a line chart that shows the sales development over time and where the user can choose which custom periods should be highlighted. So when I click here on weekends, you see the weekend dates get highlighted and I can also select the holidays. So basically a totally custom period that then also gets highlighted. And if I don't want that, I can just hide it again. All right, so let's start with a simple line chart. Now to set up this functionality, you need a date table. So let's go to our semantic model first. And here we have a pretty standard star schema with the date connected to our FT sales table. Now, let's go now to the table view so that you can see that day table. Now here, most of the columns are pretty standard, like the year, quarter, month, weekday, but I also added here the weekend column and the holiday column. Now let's concentrate first on the weekend column where we have zeros and ones. And if I just select the ones, then the only rows that remain are Saturday and Sunday. Now let's have a look at the DAX formula that generates this day table. You see over here on line 15, we have the weekend column which just checks if the weekday number is equal to six or seven. And if it is, then it returns a one, otherwise a zero. And so you could do this with if function, but you can also just say int. So int here stands for integer, which returns a one when it's true and a zero when it's false. All right, so now that you know how the backend looks like, let's go back to our report view. And here on the right hand side, see I have a measure highlight weekends. Now let's open it. And here you see I'm using an if function to check the minimum value in the weekend column. Now, this will be either a one or a zero. One means true, zero means false. Now, if the date that we are looking at within the filter context, for example, is the 9th of December, well, there's only one date, meaning there's only one row from the date table that falls within this filter context. So is that a weekend date? Yes or no. If it is, then return max y. Now, max y is just another measure that returns the overall maximum sales in our chart. Okay, now at the moment, to not complicate it further, let's just go for a fixed value, 400,000, which is a little bit higher and then the maximum value that we currently see. Now, to highlight weekends measure, I'm going to add to our visualization onto the y-axis. Now, you see, this gives me a constant line, not exactly what I was hoping for, because what I really wanted is just a line for the weekend dates. But if we add the markers, then we can see a little bit better what's going on. Now with the markers on, you see here we have our weekend dates and it connects the last weekend date with, well, the first weekend date of the next weekend. And that connecting line I actually would not like to see because if we don't have that one, then we could just, well, add a shade area and it would shade only the weekend dates, but that's not possible now. All right, so we have to go a different route. Let's go back to the builds panel. And here we're going to switch to a different visualization type, which is line and clustered column charts. Now the total sales we put on the line y-axis and the highlight weekends measure, that one stays on the column y-axis. And that actually already looks a bit better. Now, Let's go to formatting and let's just make a few formatting changes. Now, I don't want to have that shade area anymore. I also don't want to have the markers. And then for the columns, what we're gonna do is we're going to put them together. So here, go to layout and put the space between the categories to zero. And then we can also play around with the color. And so over here, let's change the color. And the color that I like is two, two, three. And then for green, 249, and for blue, 238. And that's it. We already have our weekends nicely highlighted. All right. And what about the holidays? What if we want to have other custom periods? How can we highlight those? Well, then we just need that extra column in our day table. Now, let's go to an example. I'm going to go back here to my model view. And here I have a holidays table. And you see it's completely disconnected. Now, if I then switch to the table view and then go to the date table, then here you see I added a holiday column that also returns ones and zeros, a one for the holidays. Now, let me just filter them on the ones. And you'll see only dates that fall within a certain holiday period. 
Now, how did I do this? Now, over here, I just did it with DAX, but you could also do it in Power Query or even before that. We just need that column. That's it. All right. Now, then we can go back to the report view, open over here the data panel, and you see I created the same measure for the holidays, highlight holidays. Now, also here, instead of max y, I'm just going to hard code a fixed value of 400,000. And let me add that one also onto our visualization right next to the highlight weekend measure. Now, that messes up the formatting again. So let's go to formatting. Now, these are columns. And over here, we want to change the colors. So I'm going to first select highlight weekends, select that same color from before. Then we can go to highlight holidays. And then also here, we want to change the color. So I want to have the color two, three, nine, then two, three, three, and two, five, four. All right, that looks okay, but I want to squeeze these columns together, which we can do if we go to columns again, and then select all of the series. Then you see we can go to layout, and then here we overlap them and put the space between the series to 100%. Now, in case they overlap, you have to determine the order here in the builds panel. So if I change the order the other way around, then you will see the weekends will overlap the holidays. All right, now this looks pretty good, but what actually would happen if we put a filter in place? Now, let's give it a try. I'm going to add a slicer right next to our visualization. So let's do that. And let's add a field from a customer table, like customer category. Okay, now I'm going to make a selection, let's say gift store, and hmm, now it doesn't look so good anymore. You see, we hard coded that value to 400,000, but well, our sales values now are filtered on gift store. So obviously it's way less. So how can we then dynamically change that number that's currently fixed to 400,000? Now for that, we need to calculate the overall maximum. And that brings me then to that measure max y and min y, which uses a max x function to iterate over the day table, calculate the total sales, and just add a little bit of extra space by multiplying it by 1.1. So for each date, it basically looks at all of the dates that we see here in the visualization, calculates the total sales, and then returns the maximum. And it does that everywhere. No, and that's exactly the value that I want to use with a little bit of extra. Okay, now how can we then apply it? Well, for that, we need to go back to our original measures, highlight holidays, right? So over here, I need to go back to what it used to be, max y instead of that hard-coded 400,000. And the same thing that we need to do for highlight weekends. I see, that nicely solves our problem. Perfect. And what if the sales values could be negative? Now, in this case, of course, that doesn't make sense, but maybe you would have profit. Well, a negative profit, could happen. Now to test that scenario, let's just go here to total sales and just for the time being, multiply this by minus one. And now it doesn't look so good anymore. So how can we make sure that our columns do not only go up from zero, but also go down? Well, for that, we could create just duplicates for highlight weekends and highlight holidays. So just copy the code and then add a new measure. And then here we can call this one negative. And then instead of max y, I want to go for men y. And the same thing we do for the holidays, right? So we take the highlight holidays measure and then add another one. And then here we also put negative at the end. And instead of max y, go for min y. All right. And then we can take those measures and also add them to our visualization right below the other ones. Okay. So that's the first one. Then we have here the second one. Perfect. Also, I determine the order in which they need to show. Then here, go to formatting and just update the colors. And so here in the columns, we have to select first the weekend's negative. There I want to have the green color. And then for the holidays negative, I want to have the same purple color. All right, and that fixes it. Now, there's also a secondary axis uh, that you don't really see. Uh, so we can align the zeros and then show the values. And so you see over here a little bit better that they are not completely in sync. Now if that bothers you, not that it really matters because you see visually it's still uh, okay. But what you could do is put the min y and max y uh, also here on the range for the secondary axis and for the main y axis. But for now I just uh, leave it as it is. All right. Now 
This is how you can deal with negative values. But in our example, we don't have that. So I'm just going to fix our sales measure back to what it used to be. So positive sum of the sales amount going. All right, and what if we think a better visual would be just to show columns instead of a line? Well, don't we have a problem then because we are using columns for the highlighting? Hmm, let's give it a try. So let's take a measure and then go here to the builds panel. And now what I'm saying is, well, let's take total sales and bring total sales to the columns. And well, this doesn't look so amazing. I want to have a little bit of space between the columns. So let's go here to formatting columns. And then here we have to select all where we can change the layout so that we create a little bit of extra space between the columns. But you see what's happening? Ah, this, mm, it's not exactly how I imagine it to be. I only want to change uh, the spacing for total sales. But you see, well, yeah, I cannot do that. So mm, it applies to all of the series. So this is not the solution. So let's go back over here to the builds panel. Now what we could do instead is take all of these highlight measures and put them uh, on the line drop zone. So now you see we don't have columns anymore, but we have horizontal lines. Now, what formatting changes do we need to do to make that work? Well, we need to work with the shade area. And here probably also helps if we now fix that range. So let me do that quickly. So over here, use conditional formatting for the minimum and the maximum, of the y-axis. And then also here for the secondary axis, we can do exactly the same. All right, so now that we have done that, we keep that other line here at the bottom, all right? But it still doesn't look exactly how I want it to be. For the next change, we need to go to lines. And then here, instead of smooth interpolation, we're gonna go for stepped. Okay, now, it doesn't change anything just yet. For that, we need to go to data, then go to highlight weekends. And here, we did not define a false argument. And what happens is that it then defaults to blank. Now, and therefore, we just end up with a connected line. But what if we would go to zero? Ah, now, that looks better, right? So now the line goes all the way to the zero line and then up again for when we have the weekends. Now, why does it go straight up? Because I just changed it to a stat line. All right, now for the holidays, we can do exactly the same. So let's change everything for the holidays and the negative variations of the measures as well. And then we can go to formatting, lines, turn the line off so that only the shaded area stays. And then we can go here to the shade area and maybe play around a bit with the transparency. But you see huh, something that you might not like, and that is that the shade area is now in front of the columns, not behind them. And sometimes that's probably what you want, but I think in most cases you want them to be in the back. Now, there's no way to say, ah, put that shade area behind the columns. A bit stupid, but I guess that they will still add that, hopefully. So instead of that, how can we work our way around this? Well, what we can do is to kind of hide these columns. So just put the transparency to 100%. So columns, transparency 100. Then we're just going to make use of the arrow bars. Okay, now you go to arrow bars and make sure that you don't select total sales because that one, also those arrow bars will be behind the shaded areas. You need to select the series that's in front. So, meaning, is a line series, and is the first one, highlight weekends. All right, enable it. Then the upper bound is going to be set by the sales measure, total sales, all right? Now you see, here it's in front. Okay, so that's good, but the positioning is not how I want it to be because we need to set a lower bound. Now for that, I just have a dummy measure that we turn zero, okay? And then, well, we need to make them look more like columns, right? So get rid of the markers, then go here to the bars, and then here go for a darker column, maybe just black. And then here we can play around with the width. And then the border size, I would just put it to zero. Okay, and you see, look and feel is the same, all right? So in this way, we can have the columns in front of the shaded area. All right, so now you know how to highlight custom periods behind your sales series, whether it's a line chart or a column chart. Now, what would be nice though, is if the user can choose 
what period should be highlighted. Because here we might want to show highlighting for the weekends, but not for the holidays. Or the other way around. Or maybe both. Or both you want to turn off. Well, for that, we can add slicer buttons, but we need to somehow connect it functionality. Now, how I set it up is by first creating a disconnected table with the options that I want to add. So in this case, that is a table non-working day switch. Now, look at the formula bar. Here, I just have a table that returns a column with two values, holidays and weekends. All right, nothing special. And that one, so that first column, you can then place on a slicer. Now, here, I would just go for a new tile slicer. And then here, from formatting options, we can set the layout. And so we can go for a single row and turn the title off. All right, resize it. And then here, we can make a selection of which ones should show. All right, now let me just make it a little bit prettier. All right, now you see that looks a little bit better, right? So now we can make our selection of the periods that should show. But that slicer doesn't do much just yet. Now we need to go back to our measures. Now remember, this is how they look like. We are just checking here if the date in the filter context is a weekend date. If so, I return that fixed value. But that logical test, we should extend a little bit further. We need to see, okay, which ones are selected, right? So is the weekends option selected? Well, then I want to return a fixed value. Otherwise, I don't want it, all right? So another check that should be included is if a filter is in place at all. Because if it's not filtering like this, then I don't want to show any shaded area. All right, now let me show you the updated version. So over here, I created highlight weekends, column chart, and you see the beginning is exactly the same. And so this part is basically the same. It's just over here, we have these two extra conditions. I'm checking if weekends, that is how I call that option, weekends, if it's in the values and values of returns, all of the values in the column from that non-working day switch value column and respects the filter, right? So it sees, oh, okay, weekends is selected. So if so, then also check well, if it's filtered overall, well, if this is true, then this one is also true, then only return it, all right? Now, the same I did for the holidays, right? So if we go here to highlight holidays column chart, see, I did the same condition. I just changed weekends to holidays. And this condition is just necessary for when nothing is selected, what should then happen? All right, so in our visualization, we just now need to make sure that we have the updated versions of the measures. Now, over here, I just jumped to the solution. As you see, I'm using the new version of the measures, okay? And now, well, let's test it. So if I deselect the holidays, you see the purple area is gone. I also don't want to have the weekends, you see, it's gone. I can toggle them on and off. And that's it. Now, if you were thinking, ah, couldn't he also have gone for fields parameters? Well, that was actually my first approach. But if you go for fields parameters, it almost works. It just goes wrong when you have only one of them selected because you need 100% overlap. And if you then switch to only one period being selected, nothing shows. Don't ask me why. All right. So I only got it to work like this. Or you could also work with conditional formatting. And for that, just check the file and see how I set it up there. But the end result is exactly the same. Now, let me know what do you think. Are you also using techniques like this to highlight certain periods in different types of charts? Now, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to learn more tips and tricks like this one, then you can check out these videos over here. Or if you really want to learn all of my tips and tricks around building really solid reports from beginning to end and all of my processes, templates, etc., then check out my design transformation program over here. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.